Two candidates, two different policy positions. We've got the records and the facts. We've sorted through all the mess and propaganda. Let's talk about Trump, Harris, and gun control. Well, let's start with Kamala Harris's statement in the debate. Watch. And then this business about taking everyone's guns away. Tim Walls and I are both gun owners. We're not taking anybody's guns away. So stop with the continuous lying about this stuff. She accuses Donald Trump of lying about her gun policy. Well, this was her position in the previous election. Um, I support buybacks. And I think that look, we have 5 million assault weapons on the streets of America. And we have 5 million assault weapons on the streets of America. And assault weapons have been designed, designed to kill a lot of human beings quickly. Yes. They are weapons of war. And it's, it's something I'm so passionate about and so looking forward to being president to address. We've got to deal with this. How mandatory is your gun buyback program? It's mandatory. Moderates and conservatives, you know very well that this is the constant refrain of the left in the wake of every single mass shooting. They criticize the originalists' adherence to the Founders' intent in the Second Amendment. They label every gun as an ambiguous assault weapon, just as literally any physical object could be designated at the scene of a crime. They never let a crisis go to waste in the immediate reaction to a mass shooting or a school shooting to champion the subtraction of firearms from American society. This is what Harris articulated in 2019, all the way through the Appalachian school shooting the week of the debate. Here she was the day before the debate. And we who believe in the freedom to live safe from gun violence will finally pass an assault weapons ban, universal background checks, and red flag laws. So this is the sort of policy flip-flopping we've seen since Kamala Harris was undemocratically selected by Democrat elites to be the Democrat candidate. Again, though, the beautifully unique perspective we have in this election is that we've already seen both of the candidates in office. We have the record. We know what they've done. The last time she was running for president, her position was clear, create a federal program to forcibly buy back American personal firearms. Now, here's the Biden-Harris record. They created ghost guns regulation. Ghost guns are, are firearm kits uh, without any kind of identification or serial numbers. They enacted rules to require background checks for ghost guns and, and mandated that manufacturers included serial numbers on all the parts. They have called for an assault weapons ban their entire time in office, but nothing has happened. They enacted regulations on stabilizing braces. They treated them like they're short-barreled rifles. And this administration created several executive orders to increase funding for community programs to attack gun trafficking. One of the best ways you can help our show other than by sharing today's content is by picking up some We The Free merch at wethefreeshow.com. You can be the salt and light you were meant to be by wearing the salt and light shirt or by sipping your coffee from the salt and light mug, or you can sport the God Bless America shirt and the We The Free Crest tee. We've got stickers and a smells like freedom candle, so check out our merch today at wethefreeshow.com. What about President Trump? Well, he wasn't asked anything about the Second Amendment or gun control or gun violence during the debate, but we do have his record between 2017 and 2020. First of all, on numerous occasions, Trump voiced his support for expanding background checks, but nothing ever happened. Secondly, in 2018, in light of the Las Vegas shooting, Trump's DOJ banned bump stocks, which was just overturned this year. These are devices that enable semi-automatic rifles to fire in a similar fashion to fully automatic rifles, which are illegal in the United States. And then third, in 2019, after mass shootings in Ohio and Texas, Trump voiced support for red flag laws, but nothing ever happened. The real difference is in the rhetoric and the numbers. When President Trump was in office, there was no drumbeat rhetoric from the Oval Office or the Brady Press Room to eradicate firearms from the United States. 
And from 2017 to 2020, there was an average of 16,464 gun deaths, not counting suicides. Since Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have been in office, the rhetoric has been the subtraction of assault weapons, and yet gun deaths have risen more than 22%. The genuinely conservative position is to protect the Second Amendment tooth and nail because the founders and framers' intent was the people's right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed as the last line of defense against a tyrannical regime, if one should ever arise. True conservatives realize that guns are not the problem. The problem is who's holding the gun. The, the problem wouldn't be solved by any gun laws because the problem holding the weapon would resort to something else to create his desired chaos. A perfect example is the shooting at Appalachie High School. No laws or regulations other than outright gun confiscation would have prevented that. Red flag laws would not have prevented it. Background checks would not have stopped it. Conservatives are constitutional originalists who believe that gun violence must be endured to stave off something much worse, a totalitarian regime. Trump is significantly closer to that conservative idea than Harris, who is closer to the originalist's worst nightmare. Oh yeah, and, and who is it that's been nearly assassinated twice now? Thanks for watching today. Listen, I wanna make sure that you stay informed on the news and the biblical response to it. So do yourself and us a favor and hit the subscribe button before you go. And then we would love for you to check out wethefreeshow.com to grab yourself some merch to spread the word about We The Free. And we're also going to put a video on the screen right now that we think you'll like. Now, go and be that salt and light, and we'll see you next time.